Good evening. We actually have two meetings tonight. One we anticipate to be quite short. Uh, we're going to do that now. It's really a purpose of a special meeting of the town council in order for us to call a meeting on June 24th. The second was the originally scheduled meeting for tonight, and that is a public forum on the uh, capital improvement plan. So um, if given that we have a quorum of the council present, I call the meeting to order, and uh, we are being recorded by Amherst Media. Um, there is one very short item uh, that we will discuss at three, on, as item three, which is to establish an open meeting of the residents according to chapter section, chap, the charter section 8.1. It's the second part of that section. Um, it would be on June 24th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. in this room. It's for the purposes of hearing presentations and discussing the Community Preservation Act Committee's recommendation regarding the proposed SRO project at 132 Northampton Road. Um, but prior to that, we have public comment. And I just want to mention that we have a long evening ahead of us. And so I would like to make sure that we not see this as public comment on the capital program, but we do, we are required by law to have public comment. Is there anybody present who would like to make public comment at this time? Please come forward. State your name and where you live. Make sure the button is showing green as turned on. Thank you. Nine Chadwick Court in Amherst. And do I understand that this is not a forum for mention for commenting on public, uh, the public um, projects? This is not. The, all, the only reason we are having this very first meeting is to actually set the date for the open meeting of the residents. Then I will save your time and mine and thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other person, any other people wanting to speak for public comment at this time? Okay, so um, I'd like to uh, ask counselors, uh, this is, and explain that this is the meeting that we would have instead of the meeting that was originally scheduled for June 18th, uh, when some people did not seem comfortable with the forum that we were planning to have at that time. Uh, we went back and looked at the charter and said, okay, under the charter, here's a form of meeting, and let's go with that. Um, so we'll have a motion, and then any further discussion from the council, and then a vote. The motion, if I could uh, please have a motion like this, is in accordance with chapter, I mean, charter, section 8.1, to establish an open meeting of the residents on June 24, 2019, at 6.30 p.m. in the town room for the purpose of hearing presentations and discussing the Community Preservation Act Committee's recommendation regarding the proposed SRO project at 132 Northampton Road. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. And that, Andy was the second. And could I just show the agenda to people up there so that they have a sense of how this meeting will flow? This is draft, it doesn't say that on it, but it is draft. And basically we would start with um, call to order as usual. Uh, we would have presentations and I've timed those presentations and checked that all of the people who are involved in those presentations are present although at this point the abutters and neighbors have not determined who will actually be making presentations during their 30 minutes. We will then move to public comment and continue on with the rest of the meeting. Is there any question on that agenda? Yes, Alyssa. Thank you. Is it our impression based on information we've had so far and things that have been discussed that somewhere within the presentation by CPAC or by the Amherst Affordable Housing Trust that the fact that town meeting passed zoning to allow for this three years ago is going to be discussed by one of those groups since there's not an actual call out, say, for the planning department or planning board here to explain that history? 
We will have staff present, but we have not posted them to have time to speak. I can either make sure that Mr. Hornick is prepared to speak to that or that someone else will, okay? Any other questions? Yes, Evan. First, a clarification on the motion is just to hold this meeting. That's correct. We're not voting on this agenda. This is a no, proposed No, we're just agenda. voting to hold the meeting. Right, okay. This is just to give you a sense of the discussion of what the agenda would look like now. It actually had a watermark on it saying draft. And the council will not vote on this evening. In fact, we won't even vote until either July 1st or July 22nd. Okay? Any further questions on this? I'm surprised by it being shifted to July 22nd. That's all. I thought we were going to do it by July 1st. We're trying to take a, um, at this point, we're trying to check out people's, the council members' availability for both of those meetings so that we make sure we have the quorum required. Thank okay. you. Yep. And I have checked with Valley CDC. Either time in July does not particularly affect their application. Is there any further question on this? Yes, Darcy. I'm just wondering if um, uh, if we're expecting to uh, hold a special meeting uh, any time a, a question like this comes up. The charter allows for it. They actually, the residents and abutters could have collected 200 signatures and at that point we would have been forced to call such a meeting. We felt that there was such significant um, discussion afoot, if you will, on this topic that we would use the purposes of the charter. We were going to have a meeting using a different format on June 18th and that did not seem to be an acceptable format to all the participants. Okay. Yes, Evan. The, the only part of the agenda, since it seems that you're looking for feedback on the agenda, yes, is I, I'm not. I'm, I understand why, but I'm also not clear. Uh, I'm completely. I'm a little confused on 2D. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like the a, a big section of the meeting is just a presentation by the abutters and neighbors, uh, and I'm not 100% clear why we would separate that out from general public comment. And they, I'm also, um, I'm not sure how that's being defined necessarily. So are right. we saying these are the streets from which these presentations would come from? Their supporters and opponents, how, how is that being? Um, let me just say at this point, it's been, um, I have not been provided with a overall general email list for this group. Uh, I have let other people who have contacted us and will let other people know. I have been asked by members of this group if people could make some actual slide presentations that night. And so that's the, that's the purpose of giving that group of people, whether they be for or against abutters and neighbors, um, time to speak. And then they can also speak during public comment, as can anybody else. Other comments? Uh, I welcome your feedback. Yes, Steve. So, I mean, there are lots of questions that have been sent to us from basically the neighbors, and a lot of it has to do with things like public safety. And I just wonder if the town itself, so we have the CPAC, which is a town committee, but I, and we have the, um, Amherst Affordable Housing Trust, but do we have anyone that can respond to questions that might have to do with public safety or? The you know, kind of town manager has already spoken to um, both the chief, I believe, of police, as well as um, the fire chief, fire and ambulance, and they will either be at this meeting and or future meetings, but the plan would be that they have looked at some of the statistics provided by other projects and would be prepared to speak to that. George. You said that the um, original format of the June 18 meeting was not acceptable to some parties. That's correct. Um, would you care to go into any more detail? 
I got an email back from uh, several of the neighbors that said they didn't feel that that format fit them, and they suggested another format that was consistent with the charter, and we said, okay, the charter provides for this. Let's use that format instead. Alyssa? I have a quick follow-up question about all the correspondence we've received. Is the intent to have a place on the project website to have that all up prior to this meeting? Because a lot of people have asked us what other people are saying and saying, well, I'm not sure who's representing me in, in these voices and do I need to write a separate letter and what all is out there? And I'm like, well, rather than asking you to go to the town clerk's office and ask for a copy of all the correspondence, if there's a, a way to add that material to our website prior to this meeting now that it's out a little further? That we can certainly do that. We, that. we have had questions raised during this process as to whether or not emails to town councilors are in fact public documents, and in fact they are. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Steve. So I'm sorry to overthink this, but... Uh, it's okay. Um, if some, not everyone is comfortable speaking in public, and not, one, not everyone is comfortable even speaking about this particular subject, mm -hmm. but if somebody wants to speak through an agent, are, is that allowable? In other words, does it have to be the abutters, or can the abutters speak through some that they've, that they've designated at? So the abutters are in particular are the parties of interest, because, um, but can they speak through another party if they felt that? Anybody can make a public comment, and when they make public comment, they can say, and I have spoken with. Question, yes. Okay. The phrase of butters is a very limiting phrase. I, I think you're meaning some of the, the neighbors in the neighborhood. We say so, a, we yes. say a butters and neighbors. And neighbors, great. And um, in answer uh, to Evan, um, this is all very experimental. Um, the new uh, town council is experimenting with a different form of democracy from the town meeting, which was a, a very clear form of democracy. And the effort is to let people be heard and to let things be aired. Are there further comments on this at this time? George. So I'm to assume that if someone who is an abutter or a neighbor wishes to speak they would speak under item number three, public comment. They would not speak under D, or is that uh, supposed to cover anyone who's an abutter or neighbor who has an opinion on this project? I'm reserving two D for people who specifically have presentations that they would like to make, some of which have had, I've understood to have PowerPoints, but then other comments certainly would be under three. People need to let me know that they plan to make a presentation, and they need to make sure we have the presentation, and they make, need to make sure that they let me know that in advance. Does that satisfy the concern? Okay. Yes, Evan? So anyone, I'm trying to wrap my head around this 2D, this is, it's, 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 it's very, this is the first time strange. we have tried this Understood. particular part of the charter. It's experimental and right. so go for it. Any, anyone who self-identifies as an abutter or neighbor who puts together a presentation will be allowed to give such presentation? They will need to let me know that they plan to and if it exceeds 30 minutes, then I'm gonna have to make some tough decisions. Okay. I've been led to believe that there are not that many of those. Other challenging. So there may not be that many at this point because I don't think everyone understood what was entailed, but now we can, all of us district councillors, maybe can let everyone know on our, through our Facebook pages and so forth that there are two opportunities to to uh, communicate, one is through presentations, and if that's the case, send the presentations to you, and two is through public comment. Correct. Is that right? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Further questions?
And once we try this model out, we'll see whether it follows what the intent of the charter was for having such an opportunity, okay? All right, we have a motion on the floor and we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Then the motion is to, to in accordance with tra charter section 8.1 to establish an open meeting of the residents on June 24th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. in the town room for the purpose of hearing presentations and discussing the Community Preservation Act Committee's recommendation regarding the proposed SRO project at 132 Northampton Road. We have a motion to second. All those in favor, raise your hand and state aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. There's one abstention. It's 12 in favor. No opposed and one abstention. I'd like a motion to um, adjourn I move to this adjourn. particular meeting. I move to adjourn this. And there's a second, please. One second. Okay. And all those in favor, raise your hand and state aye. 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 That is you opposed. Abstain. It's unanimous. Thirteen zero zero. Okay. Okay, uh, we, given that we have a presence of a quorum of the council, we are calling the special meeting of the town council together. It is a public forum on the town capital improvement program. And uh, the time is six, thirty, no, six forty-seven. Thank you. Um, we are going to start this um, part of the program with a presentation. This is a public forum. By the purposes of, the, of a public forum, um, the definition is that there is half as much, there's twice, there is the equal amount of time. In other words, 50% of the evening is spent in public dialogue and comment. At that point, which is after the presentations, we will take questions, and as president, I reserve the option of calling upon someone to answer your questions so that we're not just sitting here making comment, but actually can engage in some information. So with that, Mr. Bachman, please. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity, and this is uh, another first for the council and for the manager in that this is the first public forum on the capital improvement program as required by the charter. Um, we're very proud of this document and um, we're going to be respectful of your time because we really, the, the idea of the forum is to hear from the public. And uh, Sean Mangano, who uh, is a finance director for the school department, has taken on this as a task and he's been uh, working with Sonia Aldridge of our staff plus a number of uh, all the department heads and the library director and the school superintendent, several of the department heads are here today if there are particular questions for their departments. This uh, under, and so that we're carrying this out under 5.7D of the charter, uh, um, which requires a public forum. We have gone through an extensive process for this, to get to this point. Uh, it's been a thorough process. It's, uh, and I think very comprehensive. It starts with the Joint Capital Planning Committee. For those who don't know, the Joint Capital Planning Committee includes representatives from the school committee, the Board of Library Trustees, and the Town Council. They meet uh, to go through all the capital projects and prioritize and decide which ones are, are fundable and which ones aren't. Um, that is then presented to the Finance Committee, in, uh, which we have done, and, through a, and then the Finance Committee makes a recommendation to the Council. Um, so with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Sean, and he will go through the program with you. Hello. So I'm just going to apologize now if I refer to you as Dr. Morris. It's because I'm very used to saying Dr. Morris. So <laughs> if I say that, just call me on it. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, process that the Joint Capital Planning Committee uh, followed, a little bit of the history behind the Joint Capital Planning Committee, and then we'll 
look at the projects and give a lot of time to review those and, and ask questions on those. So as Mr. Bockelman uh, noted, the Joint Capital Planning Committee is comprised of town councilors, uh, library trustees, and school committee members um, designed to have a cross-section of government to review capital projects with a sort of a balanced perspective. Um, it was supported this year by myself and Sonia Aldrich. It was created back in 1992, I'm told, um, and it's responsible for weighing all the capital needs that exist in town. Um, it specifically excludes enterprise fund um, projects, so some of the large sewer and water projects are not part of this process. Um, and it's got a little overlap with the community preservation group, um, but for the most part, we do not review those projects, or we did not this year um, as part of this process. Um, ultimately, the JCPC will make a recommendation to the town manager um, by way of the annual report, which I think is what everyone has in front of them. And this year's JCPC group had some unique challenges, like all of you have experienced with everything else you, you're doing, is that it's sort of this transition year, so we had a little bit of a condensed timeline, um, and we really focused on getting this year's projects um, in, a, in a good place. So more about the process. Uh, all the department heads um, fill out these project request forms that ask for a lot of backup, um, the rationale for projects, details about the projects, metrics, and things of that nature. Um, and they get submitted to the Joint Capital Planning Committee for review. And then those department heads will come and make a presentation to the Joint Capital Planning Committee, and the committee will have the chance to ask questions. Um, you know, why are you doing this project? Have you thought about this? Is this the most cost-effective? Questions of, the, of that sort, which happened uh, often this year. Um, and then with all that information that the Joint Capital Planning Committee obtains, uh, they use that to help prioritize projects. Because um, I'm guessing, like this year and, and probably every other year, the requests outweigh the available funding sources. So there are decisions that have to be made to, to trim down the requests. The JCPC group also hears from uh, citizens. There's a citizen request process. I think it's the second or third year. Um, and so uh, citizens came and made presentations just like department heads would, and, and the committee was able to ask them questions also. Um, and I'll point them out when we get there, but a couple of those requests are part of this year's proposed capital improvement program. And then also during the process, the town manager will give feedback sort of interim so that the, the expectations are aligned between the town manager and JCPC. So um, this year in particular, we knew roads uh, were a major focus for the town manager and that we had to to keep that in mind when we were reviewing the different projects. And, and you'll see that in the, the projects that were recommended. Um, at the same time, we're looking at the available funding sources. So the, the primary funding sources that JCPC can consider um, is the tax levy. And this year, 9.5% of the tax levy was allocated towards capital. Uh, grants that might be out there, private donations, chapter 90 funds, which are funds from the state, specifically for road projects. Um, and then, so all those funding sources are put together, and the first thing we do is subtract out any existing debt related to projects that have been approved in the past, because those are legal obligations, those have to be satisfied first. Um, so you start with your funds, you subtract out the legal obligations, and anything left over is basically what the, the JCPC group has to allocate to the project request that year. All the, the projects that have been recommended have uh, funding sources identified for the projects. So um, cash capital is a term we use for sort of small to medium-sized projects that we are, are um, saying is going to be paid sort of all at once. Um, you'll see a number of those in the, in the final report. Um, there are other funding sources which also pay for the project all at once, but they have a specific funding source such as grants or private donations, and I'll point out a couple of those. And then the larger projects, um, we usually will allocate to a borrowing. So if, if it can't be paid all at once just due to the, the size of the project, um, that cost will be spread out over several years and will eventually become part of the debt projection and then the, the actual debt um, that gets subtracted out. So all of the forms for every project that department heads request uh, has to identify what the, the driving force or the, the factors are that are creating that need. And so these are the seven factors, safety, asset maintenance and improvement, something that's legally required, infrastructure improvement, productivity improvement, uh, newly identified need, or a relationship to a long-term planning objective. And so these are very important for helping the uh, group prioritize because obviously JCPC doesn't know the capital items as closely as the department heads do, um, but when we see something like safety, we know that that's a very high priority um, than some of these other ones. 
And so all that work that happened this year from uh, December and January through early May um, led to this list. These are the projects that are um, being recommended by JCPC this year. It's broken down into three groups, um, which is the, the historical grouping. So there's equipment, which is to the left, buildings, and then facilities. And then within each grouping, it's broken down by department, a uh, quick description of the project, and then the amount. And in the report you have, I think you have the full project listing that goes, gives more detail behind each of those um, descriptions. Um, if it's just a white colored project, then it means it's slated to be paid from cash capital, so it's an outright purchase um, from the tax levy. If it's shaded gray, it means it's projected to be a borrowing, and you'll see that there's a few of those. I'll, I'll talk about those more in a second. If it's yellow, it's Chapter 90 funds, and if it's that light blue that almost looks gray, um, that's a grant. The only one up there that falls into that category is the Housing Production Plan, which has a grant. And then if it's that tealy color for protective gear for the fire department, that's another funding source, and in this particular case, it's leftover articles from a prior year. So funds that were not spent from an approved article in the past were sort of recycled for uh, new capital needs and allocated to this. Um, so for sort of themes of the projects that have been approved, I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but we'll, we'll t take questions on all of them. Um, the themes this year, I think, are roads. You'll see almost $2 million allocated towards roads. I think it's the same as last year, or slightly higher than last year, um, in terms of the total contribution towards roads. And also sidewalks, um, the 200000 for sidewalks, I believe, is increased from last year as well. And then the other theme I would say was trying to move the, the building projects in town forward. So there's the three shaded gray um, projects in the middle column. Um, the first one is for the Public Works new facility, 250,000. Uh, the Fire Department new headquarters, 250,000. And 400,000 for a feasibility study for the uh, school project. So all of that is basically to move these projects forward. There's some other decisions that have to happen, but basically JCPC said these are important to, to keep moving forward. Um, so the 250 for the DPW and the fire station would basically be the next phase of those projects. So I think, for example, for the DPW, it would be looking at schematic design for that project. Um, for the school, it's really contingent on when the MSBA gets back to us um, December or January. Um, we'll have more information, take next steps at that point. And then lastly, so the, the two uh, citizen, citizen request projects that are shown here, so one's sort of hidden. Um, the, the preliminary feasibility study at Crocker Farm, which is at the very bottom of the center column, that came from a citizen request wanting to explore what's possible at Crocker Farm more, more fully. And then the other one, I believe, is sort of part of or packaged in the um, transportation plan, $50,000. That was to uh, develop a, uh, I think it was a sidewalk concept uh, further. So both of those were specific requests to, the, to JCPC this year. So these are all the projects. We're happy to, I don't know if you want to take a time now or keep going through the, the rest of the presentation, but um, we're happy to answer questions on any of these, these projects. Please continue on with the presentation. Okay. So in addition to approving the current year's list of projects. We also developed the ten, a 10 year plan. The charter car calls for a five year, but in the past we've done a 10 year, so we maintain that for this year. So this first page is the summary, and at the top you have your available funding sources for FY20, but also projected out through for the next 10 years. Um, and then below that you have proposed capital spending. So this has all the projects that department heads have identified as needs in the future. And then the Important number to look at is uh, if the available funding sources exceed or are below the proposed spending. Um, and so you can see this column right here, which is a, a large negative number. So clearly, we have more needs than we have available funding. Um, so a, a point that was made very clear, and we heard from many different people this year, is we really have to give a, a hard look at the out years with capital projects. Um, one of the reasons why this is so out of whack is because it includes the debt payments for the new for the new DPW and also the new fire station, but we haven't taken a look at the other projects that are on the list to try to prioritize those. So right now, this is really just showing sort of all the needs that are in town without really going through and starting to trim that back a little bit. Um, but that is a primary focus for the next JCPC group is to really look at those out years um, and come back with a, a plan that we think we can afford. 
And so this shows also the 9.5% here. And then the plan for JCPC or the plan for the town has had uh, in the past is to keep increasing half a percent every year in terms of the tax levy that's allocated towards capital. So this shows what that deficit would look like if we went to 10% next year. So you can see the deficit gets a little smaller because more funds are allocated towards capital. The rest of the 10-year plan shows is broken down by equipment, buildings, and facilities, and then within that by functional areas. So you can see the different fiscal years and, and the projects that are identified as needs. And again, within this, there's shading that indicates what the funding source is. So the, the gray is the borrowing, and, and there's some other, there's a key that tells you what the other funding sources are. And so that's it. Um, that's the, the projects that have been proposed for FY20 and, and the rest of the 10-year plan. Um, and we're happy to answer questions on any of the projects. Okay. I'm going to move to questions at this point from the audience, unless the council has a clarifying question at this time. All right, uh, we're gonna clear the decks, although I have the feeling we'll see you up here again, Sean and Paul. And I'd like to see a show of hand of those people who would like to ask questions or make statements. Please come forward. When you come forward, please state your name, where you live, and your relationship to the town. And also, if you have made comment or plan to make comment, Please make sure you register back there at the sheet. Okay, sir. My name is David Clooney. Uh, I live at 984. Oh, thank you. My name is David Clooney. I live at 984 East Pleasant Street, and I used to be a member of town meeting. Also relevant is that I work for the fire department full time as a firefighter and a paramedic, and I'm therefore a member of the union as well. Um, and I just uh, wanted to ask if perhaps one of the chiefs could answer. Um, how the capital requests in particular for the ladder truck, which is from 1992, uh, and the ambulances, which see a lot of use, um, how those affect the maintenance budgets um, and whether or not uh, that, if, if the effect on the maintenance budgets is significant enough that there might be some value in shifting uh, those priorities to get a better value out of the capital money. Um, Although our primary problem at the fire department remains staffing, this is a capital meeting, so I'm more interested in the vehicles and equipment. At and this point. thank you for keeping your questions to the issue of capital, since that's what it is. Mr. Bachman, if we're going to call to, on people from town, I'm going to lead, go to you and then say, you decide. And that was my question. Thank, thank you, you very much. Hi, Lindsay Strong, an assistant fire chief, and um, I've been responsible for the operations, so therefore the uh, vehicles in the department. I think what um, uh, Mr. Clooney is talking about is the fact that if you look at your capital um, requests, there are only two items on it for the fire department this year, which is protective gear and some uh, radio equipment. What he's referring to is what you don't see is the request that didn't make it this far. Specifically, he mentioned uh, the ladder truck and an ambulance. Uh, the ladder truck is actually 1988, so it's 31 years old. Um, therefore, it's exceeded the NFPA's recommended lifespan for a ladder truck of 30 years, which is why we've had it on the capital plan now for uh, five or six years. So it's been coming around the corner. It was not put forward this year. I think that is his concern, and the other firefighters' concern is why something like that that's been on the radar for five years is not uh, showing up at this point to be voted on by the uh, town council. Um, to his point about maintenance, yes, we did spend about $30,000 on the ladder truck this past year uh, for maintenance, and that's expected to grow as it continues to age and parts become unavailable. Likewise, ambulances, we are trying to get on a seven to eight year replacement cycle versus the, our previous 10 year replacement cycle because of the use they're getting. Um, and again, we did try to request an ambulance this year, but did not make it as far as JCPC. Okay. Does that answer Thank your question? You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody from JCPC that would like to address this issue at this time? 
There's only three of us here, so. No? Okay, Andy, please. Yeah, um, as chair of JCPC, I guess I'll uh, take the role of uh, just saying that we did give very serious consideration to the ladder trucks because it has been a subject that has been discussed within JCPC for quite a number of years. And uh, in the end, um, in, we consulted with um, the town manager and through the town manager, senior staff in the department. And the question became, um, weighing that against um, what was our other largest um, need that we were hearing tremendous amount from all over town, including many departments who use our roads, and that is the roads. And uh, the uh, ultimate um, decision of the committee after receiving input from the town manager and others was that uh, we felt that uh, making significant headway on the 16 plus million dollar backlog in um, our roads and uh, making progress on our sidewalks uh, was uh, what we would recommend to the town manager. And uh, of course, our, and that is our role to make a recommendation to the town manager. Is there any further comment on this at this time? Are there other people who would like to make public comment? Questions? Pat. I'm new to a lot of this, but um, this starts to seem to me that um, we're not doing the maintenance that we need for the fire department in this instance, which is what happened over time with the schools, and we, we seem as a town to delay maintenance. So I'm just kind of wondering about this process. The overall maintenance, is that what you're discussed pointing out? Yeah, for buildings and in this instance for the fire truck. Okay. And things like that, I mean. Okay. I hear the roads issue, but I'm, I'm concerned about <coughs> ongoing maintenance. Thank you. So all the comments that have been made are, are accurate. There, there are enormous needs in the town, and we've had to prioritize what we can afford and what we, under the limitations we have uh, in terms of where our funding is. So I think we looked at the uh, fire truck and the uh, uh, the quicker schedule for replacing the ambulances and compelling arguments were made by the chiefs. It's not like they didn't bring it to the attention. So I think the chiefs for the fire department were very clear about the needs uh, So um, and advocated for them, but understood the constraints that the town is, is in. In terms of, I think you're talking, referencing more building maintenance. I think our vehicles, we will maintain them, but in terms of building maintenance, um, it's an issue. Uh, we know it's an issue. We tried to address it in a very small way by putting sums of money in the operating budgets for the fire, the police, and the DPW, uh, and in conservation for land use to, so that they just have a small pot of money to address some of the um, more urgent building issues. And we work with the departments uh, to make, help maintain those buildings. And there are some capital requests under facilities for actual building improvements. Um, for some of our buildings, we're sort of hesitant to invest too much because we are very, um, we have high expectations that we'll be replacing the fire, uh, the central fire station and the DPW. So uh, life and safety issues we want to address in those buildings, but um, we try not to rehab them because we're hoping that we're going to get new facilities because those, facil those current facilities are so um, way out of date and just um, it's not right for our employees to be working in those facilities. And it's time for the town to step up and um, replace those two buildings. Dorothy? I don't know if this is, this is true or not, but I've heard that some of the fire trucks have had to be special adapted models to fit the too small fire station. And uh, is it true that if we bought a new truck now, 
it wouldn't be able to fit in our present fire station. Evening. Chief Nelson. Uh, yeah, the, if we if we buy buy a new ladder, ladder truck, I mean, we talk yeah. about ladder truck. Yeah, we can we can buy 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 it so that that it will it will fit in the north 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 station right. when when we build a new a new state state station. <laughs> we're we're going to make make uh, to make sure that, that it's ad, ad, adequate for any any new truck 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 that comes comes down down the road. Okay. Thank right. you. Sure. Other other comments at this time. Another subject. <laughs> Margaret is our official timekeeper, so I need to look to her and know where we stand. There's still five minutes. Okay. Meeting the conditions, the requirements of the charter that we have as much time for public comment as we do for presentations, we are still open for public comment. Alyssa? I'm confused. Um, it is now the time for this person to talk or were they supposed to talk at a different time later tonight or I, I just think because this is new to people they're not really sure what the flow is and neither am I. Margaret did the person that provided you with this I don't believe she, I don't believe she's here okay thank you this is a statement that we received from Sarah McKee it's a, uh, she's the former Jones Library trustee president, and it's in regard to the Jones Library demolition and expansion project. Uh, clearly, when we receive things like this, we also then make sure they're available. We actually would like to hear from you, so the floor is open. Yes, Ms. Marshall. Hi, Sarah Marshall, 64 Eames Avenue. Um, is this plan the same thing as the one town, one plan plan, or is, or is there a different or, or simultaneous process happening. Mr. Bachman, do you want to speak to that? And Mr. Magano. So they're connected. Um, the one town, one plan, I think, will feed into this. So in this plan, the new building projects are sort of pushed together um, because right now they're still sort of being developed when they're actually going to fall. Um, as that one town, one plan gets more developed, um, that will feed into this overall capital planning program. Okay. And I might mention that we continue to look at um, sharpening the model to look at our capital program. Uh, and as you saw in the capital projects, um, our capital plan, that we have put aside or, re or reserved the option, I should say, of 250,000 for a DPW schematic design, 250,000 for a fire station schematic design, and 400,000 toward a match should the MSBA come through, we hope, on December 12th. Uh, none of those will happen until we actually are ready to vote because those, in fact, are capital and the council will have to vote on them separately. We cannot move forward on either DPW or fire until such time as we have a site because you cannot do a schematic design until you have a site on which to build. And on the school, it would actually be the feasibility phase that we have applied for and spent a lot of time on this late this winter. Kathy? 
Um, I just want to add a comment to respond to Sir Marshall's comment. If you look at the more detailed uh, tables that Sean just quickly showed for year two through ten, the big deficit shows up because the new debt costs for the buildings is included, but we can't spend more than we have. So that's the question that we're going to be grappling with over the summer and the fall as a town and as a council on a how, uh, you know, with if we want to keep doing roads, if we want to do building maintenance, where do new buildings that are expensive come in? So it, it shows up in a couple different places as new debt, and then toward the end, there's an estimated cost to the town budget of the projects. Okay. Is there further comment? Yes, please come forward. I'm Ginny Hamilton. I live at 140 Middle Street in South Amherst, and I want to thank you and you for this sobering and realistic exp um, map of what our town me needs. That so many of these capital projects have been delayed for too long, and the longer we delay, the more expensive things get. So those numbers are sobering, and they're realistic, and it is um, up to us as a town and to you all as our elected leaders to help us find the way to make these happen for the good of the whole town. Um, I love the phrase, one town, one plan. Um, and I do think that that's what we need. And so I want to thank you for taking this on um, with diligence and with honesty. It's not going to be easy. Um, but, uh, but I think it's something that our town is ready for and very much needs. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any further comments at this time? Hearing none, is there any further comment at this point? I call for, yes. We will have, I think, a separate public forum on the capital projects. In the fall. Yes, good. Yes. So that's when people will have a chance to talk in more detail about fire department, public works, school, and library. The big capital projects. <laughs> the really big ones. Yes. Kent Ferber, I live at 481 Station Road in South Amherst, and I have a question, which is the amounts uh, indi indicated in the uh, general uh, overall plan for total buildings for FY21 and 22, do those take into account any uh, other sources of revenue? For example, the 13.9 that the MBLC is going to come up, they include this, so this the 72 million is net of the grant from, for, the, for the library? And since Sean was the one that built this, we'll make sure he answers it correctly. So, so on the spending table, uh, what he's pointing to, um, what's included for spending for the, uh, all the projects. So for the DPW, it's the full cost of the DPW estimate. Um, for the fire station, it's the full estimate. For the schools, it's just the town, sh the estimated town share. And for the library, it's comprised of two components. So the library's, the last presentation, the, the latest numbers, there's, there's two pieces. There's the net cost that the town would ultimately bear, which is about 15.9 million. But there's also this fundraising piece, which is about 6 million or so. So what's in the, this capital plan is the net town share of 15.9 and the fundraising portion. Um, because the understanding is that if the fundraising doesn't come through um, as planned, then the town would have to pick up that difference. So we're showing the full amount for now, which is the way it's been presented in the past. But again, assuming the fundraising occurs as planned, then the, the net share to the town would be the 15.9. And it p appears in 21, I believe, yes. because that's what we understood from the library trustees and yes. the directors to that. Was, that is when the application would be before the... But, yeah. but um, it does not library. include the state grant share. Right. Okay. Are there any other questions at this time? Okay. Please. Go ahead. So is there a way for people, including myself, to find out uh, 
in the roads maintenance budget, how much of it is going for bike paths or you know, a segregation of that? And, and my other question is, in, um, including bus stops and like in South Amherst, there are a couple of places where there are no shelters and all. So can we see that level of detail anywhere? Just like town meeting. No. <laughs> um, we, uh, there is no list now of, the, of projects that are coming up and what they are and what their costs are so we can like, show you where they're going. Um, we haven't finished that list. The work we're doing now, um, we can tell you what certain projects are. East Pleasant Street, the bus stops on East Pleasant Street that we put in with the pull-offs and the sidewalks, that's about one, uh, 150000 is what those bus stops and the sidewalks have cost. So when we, as we finish the projects, we have a better number. We do have estimates as we go along. There's no um, East Hadley Road, the project on East Hadley Road, that's moved along sufficiently. There's numbers for that. But nothing in, beyond the future, what we're doing next year, has actually got a, a good number right now. So you, we're working on that. Does that answer your question? I guess what we would like to see is how did we spend our money then at some point? If you want to see how you spend your money, you can go through the breakdown and accounting, and accounting can pull some of that stuff off. There is some mixing and matching, though, because we pay for things out of different accounts. Mm -hmm. um, something maybe paid for out of the Housing Choice Grant, that number's over here, um, and then you'd have to pull out the Chapter 90 money or any of the town money. So um, the money is accounted for, but then you have to actually go through and pull things together specifically for the project to see what the project numbers are. So you can't really match up funding sources easily with what we spent. You can know what we spent or you can know the funding source. Sorry, that's just kind of how we are right now. I think what we'd like to know is the projects and what we spent. Okay? That, that's doable. Okay. Any other questions from the audience, comments? If not, uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? And abstain. Adjourned 13 0, 0.